Hey, Hacklings. We're busy filming episode four, but we're just having a blast, and there's so much great stuff going on that we thought, you know, why not throw in some extra content? We're not promising, like, any weekly releases, not every Wednesday, but, hey, you know, why not? We're having a bunch of fun, so here's some goodies. So what I wanted to talk to you about, Harrison, is sandboxing. And what that basically means is running something in a virtual environment. And this is very useful in a couple of situations. Say like you're John, and you're running some custom code. Say like you're developing a new application. You're using some Windows APIs or something that you're not very familiar with. You're afraid that it's going to crash your system. You're going to lose your work. Well, test it out in what's called sandbox, a virtual machine. Okay. That way, if it crashes, you've only crashed the virtual machine, not your actual well, PC. Of course, there's also the other situation that uh, I know everybody, everybody has run into where you leave your computer for like five minutes, and you come back and your girlfriend's been on it, oh. and like there's all of a sudden pop-ups all over your screen, and things that really shouldn't be there. Well, you know, it, it's... And, and just like the thing where they're like... You know, I want to play these little Yahoo games. You're like, and you're like you, you know, I don't understand when you say yeah, no. No, and they're like, oh, it's just this ActiveX thing. I think I'll click yes. And then you're like, you're trying to explain to them why, you know, maybe they yeah. shouldn't. And they look, just don't get it, man. okay, just save your hard drive, save your marriage, follow these simple steps. It's really easy to do. So, um, you know, at work, I use Microsoft Virtual Machine because we have a license from Microsoft. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I'm familiar with. Uh you know, VMware Workstation, but there's no way I'm going to pay 200 or 400 bucks. No, that's pretty expensive. Home. So if you want to do this at home and you want to do it on the cheap, uh, a simple solution is using some open source software. And there's a lot of great ones out there, like Box. Um, uh, there's also uh, Zen, right? Yeah, Zen. Uh, yeah, Zen one. VM monitors. There's also Q EMU. Right, and then yeah. I guess uh, we should mention Wine, even though it's it's, it's not an not emulator. an emulator. Wine is not an emulator, <laughs> but. Um, you know, it's actually a uh, program for Linux that'll allow you to run Windows applications in Linux. Right. It's not really an emulator. It's but worth mentioning, though. Yeah. So. so anyway, those are some that you should check out. We'll have them in the. I guess we'll have show notes for this, uh, even yeah, though it's I not really a show. I yeah. Why not? We could. <laughs> yeah. I'll just write up something quick. But uh, but anyway, okay. So what we've got here. Yeah. What we've got here is I've got Windows XP running inside of Windows XP. Isn't that nice? Um, no, and it's not really. Not, not really. Okay. <laughs> well, what I'm going to try to demonstrate here... But if here, you're going to demonstrate something yeah, okay. falling apart, then why not use Windows? Right? Exactly. Well, you know, what I want to do is demonstrate here Windows crashing in a virtual machine and it not affecting the host operating system. Now, Windows is easy to get to crash, but I want to get it to crash on camera, so I'm going to have to make a little changes to the registry. There's actually a really neat um, kind of hack. Uh, I don't know if it's really a hack. It's kind of a developer's thing. So that when uh, people that are developing for Windows or developing the operating system want to crash Windows on demand, they can make a change to the registry with a few keystrokes, get a blue screen of death. So this is like built into Windows? Yeah. It's, you know, if you ever wanted a blue screen, you just <laughs> I mean, like, change. I can't really think of too many times where I've wanted to crash Windows on demand. I'm trying to crash it for the segment. I know. I'm just saying. Like, okay. I mean, it's a cool little feature. Yeah, it is. Well, okay, so first thing you're going to want to do, though, is in Windows XP, they changed it so that by default you don't get the blue screen of death. It gives you this, uh, it just restarts the machine. Oh, come on, man. The blue screen of death is the whole best part about crashing your machine. Well, I know. You know, and you know what the most fun you part You ever, like, whipped out the digital camera just to get a picture of, like, your third BSOD <laughs> at work, you know what No, I mean? what's even better is when you go to the airport and they've got those BSODs everywhere. Oh, yes, everywhere. that's a good everywhere. one. Yeah. There's a bunch of websites. That's guys. probably why they pictures. changed it so that it automatically restarts. So yeah, instead so of the blue screen of death, you see the login screen <laughs> yeah so anyway what we're going to do here is uh going to show you real quick how to change it so that instead of restarting you get the blue screen of death real easy right click on my computer i'm, gonna, I'm totally going to do this to all my friends com you know computers and be like oh by the way you know next oh time there's a secret to oh remember <laughs> remember telling irc like, no no remember telling your friends back in the day like the secret code not iddqd in like doom oh, was to okay. hit control alt delete yeah, twice that's, <laughs> that's a good one yeah or, or on irc to hit alt yeah, f4 that's yeah. what i was thinking yeah okay so we head over to the advanced tab and we just go into settings under startup and recovery and I've already done it here. All we have to do is uncheck this box that says automatically restart. Okay. Okay. So now we actually get the BSOD in all of its glory. Nice. So we're going to close out of this. We had to make a registry change here. And it's pretty simple. We just head into RegEdit and go into H key local machine, system, current control set, services, I8042PRT slash parameters. We create a new D word value. And that is crash on CTRL scroll. And we give that a value of 1. Restart your Windows XP so machine. Bad. Yeah, well, hey, you know, restart your Windows XP machine for that to take effect. And then whenever you want, you can just press 
you can hold down the right control button okay. and press scroll lock twice. So let's go ahead and do that. You hit control, right, control. and scroll lock twice. Nice! Bam! <laughs> Blue screen oh, on demand. That's you know? a good one. I don't That's think good. it gets any better than that. I like this. So, I'm going to be doing it all the time now. You know, and it's also great when, say, like you're, you know, you got some, I don't know, peer to peer app or maybe an application that converts HTML to PDF or something and you think it may gum up the work, spyware, who knows, whatever. You're going to use this program once. You're going to throw it away. Maybe the uninstaller won't work. Maybe it's going to leave some yeah. DLLs. Whatever. Run in the virtual machine? Yeah, just run in the virtual machine, get Makes the job sense. done, delete it, whatever. Sounds good. So that's pretty much it. We will see you guys on November 5th. Yeah.